Greetings and welcome to In-Depth on DK Rasta. Now there's a saying that those who cannot do teach. Dr. Craig Ramla, he puts that statement to bed being a mover and shaker in his field as well as an educator at the UWI St. Augustine campus. He joins us to speak about the potential opportunities available to you with a Master of Applied Science in AI. Welcome, Dr. Craig. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thanks for having me here, DK. Definitely our pleasure. And looking at the fact that you also lecture at the UWI, there are things that are sweeping in terms of conversation about chat GPT, other forms of AI, and how they can impact both positively and negatively on how people do examinations, submit coursework. When you hear AI, what's the thing that gets you most excited? Well, it's going to be a new frontier of technology for um, the world. Um, having these machines that can reason, having these machines that can produce um, natural language, it can converse with us, you know, closely to how a human would do. I think that that's a very um, good and positive way for the world to move towards, especially in, in, in education. I know that you, you kind of slanted there a little bit with that. Um, but, but yes, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very much good in the communication of thoughts and ideas um, to people um, having these machines learn better. And I'm glad, yes, so everything we do, because this, this can be so broad, so everything we, we try to do within certain parameters that we will uh, kind of outline what the rubric is of the conversation. But and there is the fact that if it's starting from somewhere, it's not starting from a place that is totally objective because it's coming from the mind of someone who develops the initial programs that they build on. Uh, what are some of the things that we should be a little mindful of as well? Because we've had conversations with individuals saying that some of these algorithms, some of the AI, because of the originators of them, can actually treat, in, and this person was operating from the US, persons of color a different way from other people who look a little different. So what are some of those cons or things we need to be a little more cautious of as well? Okay, so, and let's speak specifically about um, these large language models, right? Um, let's start with that because ChatGPT is one of them. Um, there are several other artificial intelligence, you know, fields, uh, tools, mechanisms. We have reinforcement learning type and image type, but let's Let's, let's stick towards these large language models. So, so you are right. Um, based on what the training data set is for these large language models, there would be some bias um, towards certain things. Uh, another thing that we should look out for is hallucinations. So that's where these language models will speak with a certain level of confidence on things that it's just making up, right? Um, and we need to be mindful that that can happen. And it, it does think, if we, we can use that to think very loosely here, but it does think that uh, what it's saying is correct. Uh, another thing that we have to, and so that, that gives us disinformation, so that's not correct information, right? And another thing that we have to look out for is really, the, is, is really over reliance. Uh, what we are seeing is people are becoming more and more reliant on this tool without fact checking it or validating what it's saying. And I think, you know, those three things are the major set of items that, that we need to be careful of when we when we look at this, uh, use these kinds of tools. Um, that being said, there is a lot of research on the safety and we are looking at the new regulations and policies that go into place in how to better train these AI systems so that they do not give us this level of bias of being cognitive bias or being some kind of you know, gender bias or, or color bias or something like that. Um, so, so those are things that, that the area is currently working on. Um, we in UE have our own large language model and that we are building out as well. Um, so you know, all of these things are happening at a massive scale. But you can't just, just touch that and leave it like that, Dr. Ramlan. and say, we're building our own large language model, and you just, and you just continue. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But I, I like the fact that you, you, you talk about having those filters, the safety aspects, because that reminds me of when I was looking for one or two pieces of paper. You might look, 
but you dare not cite Wikipedia on your on, on, on <laughs> when you when you when you're doing when you're writing up your stuff, your bibliography. And looking at ways that we get information and how it is we treat with information, I think is very important. But in terms of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering's Master of Applied Science in AI, learning the language, learning how you treat with it, speak specifically to that program. Thank you. No problem. So this uh, program is something that we have in the work right now. So, you know, in UE, we have a couple of rigors that we have to go through to make sure that we can produce this program. This is something that we want to get people excited about, so we are talking about it, but it's in the work. Uh, what that program looks at, it's at a very technical level, so we are going to look at courses that span using these uh, large language models and image-based models. Now, you know that at Electrical, we deal with both the hardware and the software side of things. So doing our program, you will get to understand how these GPUs work, how to train these systems, how to develop the algorithms for these systems, so some of the math, and how to deploy these systems on the software, how to code these systems and use them in an industrial setting. Um, we also have a lot of applications uh, in, inherent in our degree. So we have things specializing in control systems, communication systems, telecommunication systems, you know, all these news with the satellite uh, communication systems. We have things like renewable energy, electric vehicles, all of these different applications we are going to, to use. We are going to enable, use the AI to enable uh, research and work um, involved in these industries. And once again, I really like the fact that you're not talking about an over-reliance, but you're able to understand the language, you're using it as a tool, but not your only tool. But I, I'm also wondering, though, while you're building that program out, are there any prerequisites that you see? So someone who's saying, okay, well, I want to put myself in a position so that when this program is online, I'm able to jump onto the first cohort. What are some of those things that you'd want that person to say, okay, well, you should have this in your toolkit. You should have this, you should have these courses as pre possible prerequisites. I, that's a very fantastic question. Thanks, thanks for that question. Um, DK. So one of the other things that we are also pushing out would be these CPEs, the, uh, these are uh, short courses, right? And so they aren't for matriculation right now into the program, but what they will do is they would give you the skill set to start having these conversations about AI. So these CPEs are going to, uh, are for a, a really wide catchment of people, right? So, okay, so some of the things that we are seeing with AI is that we, we are seeing that the, the, the labor market is, and this is happening globally, they want people who can use these AI tools to have um, better productivity. So they, some companies are reporting 5 to 10% increase of productivity with these tools. Uh, we noticed that in the department. So what we want to do is provide these vocational type courses, uh, there will be courses for, for you know, a wide catchment of education profiles, right? Uh, so we'll focus on individuals without degrees, individuals with degrees, individuals who, you know, are going on to graduate type of degrees. And we are looking to get people more interested in the space, how to use these tools at a basic level, how to build these tools out at higher levels, and, you know, how to research these tools at a much higher level. So I think if, if you really want to get in, specifically into our postgraduate programs with AI, um, and you, you, have, you really don't have an idea about how these things would work and how, if you are a good fit for these things, you know, maybe try out our CPEs first, and then you know, get, we, we can put you on a train and we'll give you special advising into how you can get yourself into the program and so on. And with that, we take a short break. We are speaking about opportunities for learning practical applications with AI at the UWI. And we're doing so with Dr. Craig Ramlal. Stay with us. We return after this. Welcome back. We are speaking with UWI lecturer, Dr. Craig Ramlal, UWI lecturer, but so much more. So I want to get a, a little idea of your story, please, Dr. Ramlal. Uh, the cliff notes in terms of 
what it has led you down this path? Because many times people talk about being a doctor, a lawyer, as opposed to the field that you're in, which is very timely right about now. So what are some of the steps along your journey to where you are? Um, it's a story. <laughs> so um, I did my bachelor's and my master's at UWI, um, and I did it in electrical and computer engineering. And out of my master's and some from my bachelor's, I published three articles in uh, this space, in intelligent systems, in intelligent control strategies, right, separately. Um, and at that time, uh, that was a while ago, um, you know, these systems weren't well understood. So we contacted some individuals from another country abroad, and we said, you know, well, we want to build out these things as controllers for you guys, um, for you to use, and these are the benefits and so on. And they said, well, you know, those things are not deterministic. We don't want that. That's still new. We, we, we don't want to handle that. And at that time, I was looking to do my doctorate. Um, and I, 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 it was a risk. I, I didn't know what was going to happen in the field. It felt like the field was going to move towards this way. Um, but, you know, it could have been a fact, right? Um, but I ended up pursuing it. I ended up sticking with it. And I did my doctorate a split site with here and a university named the King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals in Saudi Arabia. And I specialized in something called um, learning, iterative learning subspace projections, which is how to get these AIs, how to train them better, how can we put them on laptops and these kinds of things. And, um, you know, to this day, I stuck with it. And, you know, I continue teaching it at the UWI and, and, and you know, bringing in people, you know, we have students coming in all the time, very, very interested in this field, of course, because it's it's booming at this point in time. Uh, it would not slow down for some time. We are still seeing the, the acceleration of it. It's, it's not at maturity as yet. So there's still a lot of investment in the area. There's still a lot of excitement, a lot of research work going into the area. And I'm, I'm very glad I took that risk. And I did what I did. As are we. And one of the reasons that I asked that question is I'm wondering if it's you, if it's happy accident, or if someone else can use the UWI as a potential opportunity to enter this sort of space. Because when I see some of the things that you've, you've been involved in, in terms of principal investigator for developing ventilators, robotic systems, and decontamination units with officials from the Ministry of Health, uh, developing industrial diagnostic tools with deep learning for Estonia's national grid, looking at some of those things, wondering whether or not, wait, no, it's accidents, you have a link, or is this from a base that is possible at the UWI? So how do you answer the person who asked that question? I, that's a fantastic question. I, I'll answer that question in two two different ways. I, I have to say, you you asked really, really, really good questions. I did look at a couple of your interviews, and this, these are some very good questions. So the first way is that when COVID had happened, you know, I, the university really, really tries to make an impact locally and regionally, right? Um, we, we do try to protect our country. So when COVID happened, um, a group was formed named the COVID Engineering Response Team. They mainly consisted of members from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I was, I was a member of that group. We were the ones that developed the face shield. I, I don't know if you remember the UE shield. Yes, sir. We developed standards for the face mask. We also developed a protector doctor kit, which were giving doctors video laryngeal scopes so they don't have to go close to a patient's mouth so that they catch the, the, the disease. Um, and also we developed high valued systems. Uh, this was from the support of the Ministry of Health, uh, NGC, and a lot of, uh, of officials from um, you know, the University of Florida, as well as the Ministry of Health, gave us support in, in developing these systems. These high-end uh, products would have been high-acuity ventilators, um, air decontamination systems, sanitization robotics, and CPAP devices. Uh, the reason for developing these things and developing, you know, uh, having some sort of backup for the supply chains, which was absolutely necessary at that time, was so that if there is any more 
of a reason, any, any more of a pandemic or any kind of disease that happens to our country that way again, any kind of respiratory disease, we can quickly move these systems into production and insulate our country from um, some those effects uh, of, of the viruses that are happening again. And with that, we, we, we kind of saw, in some sense, AI to be making a change because it's making a change globally and it might happen to our country as well. So with that same frame of mind for, with impact, thinking about impact, we said it's, it's, it would be best if we upskill our labor market, if we upskill our labor force so that we can compete globally with everyone who, is, who are also you know, being upskilled to operate in AI. Another thing is that uh, you know, UE is a top 1% in, in the world right now. It seems that locally we don't take that seriously, but internationally they do. So they find us and they ask us to do research with them. And that's how we make these links and, and, and move on and uh, so on. So I hope that answers the, the, the question. It does, and it also validates a statement made by campus principal, Professor Rosemary Bellantoine, in terms of the looking at uh, entrepreneurial mindset that wants to be fostered and developed a little more at the UWI. And it also looks at current and real world applications as opposed to say, okay, as opposed to just saying, okay, well, I have the knowledge and um, I'm hoping that someone hires me, as opposed to looking into the future, seeing what will be needed and creating someone who can compete on the global job market, as opposed to just saying, okay, well, Trinidad and Tobago or the region, looking at the global oyster. But also the different teaching methodologies, is that something that is involved? Because I see one of your research interests is also feels like game theory. How does that play into how AI will be taught, and we have about two and a half minutes again. Yeah, yes, uh, no problem. So what, what I predict, and this is just me speaking here, is that into the future, we are going to see AI systems that have more autonomy. So they have more governance in what they are doing. Now it's going to be safe. It has to be where the humans dictate how that runs. But it's, I, I see that it's going to have more autonomy. So what we might see in the future is that we'll have AI systems with AI systems interacting with each other. So I think it's important to understand how that relationship is brought about. So that's why I put a lot of uh, effort into studying game theory, uh, looking at what is going to happen when these systems start you know, doing, doing what they are doing. We, we are talking about Industry 4.0, right? So we have a lot of this data coming out. We are using AI systems to have some more autonomy in how these industries run. You know, that's an example of how these things might work. Um, AI in healthcare systems, AI in some policy making scenarios, you know, these kinds of things may happen, right? And definitely that is one of the things that we're looking forward to. Thank you very much, Dr. Greg Ram Craig Ramlal, representing the light rising out of the West. And we are looking at possibilities even before the program is there, but getting people on the lookout for the Master of Applied Science in AI. Thank you very much. And on behalf of the entire TGT News team, I'm DK Ronstar. This has been In-Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us.